Hello everyone, coming clean here. It's ranking time again. I am a high school science teacher with a master's degree in biology and today I'm putting my knowledge to good use as I'm going to rank all characters on Skyner's Swap Force based on how realistic their design is. I hope you'll enjoy it. There is a certain gimmick in this game that is not particularly realistic. You're right, it's the swap mechanic. I will simply ignore it and assume that the corresponding tops and bottoms make up a single organism. I would also like to make the usual disclaimer that I think the character design in the Skyrim games are awesome and I'm sure the developers didn't go for realism and that is totally fine. I'm doing these videos for entertainment purposes only. Let's get into the ranking. First up we have the excluded tier. Here we have Magnetarge, Boomyet, Windup and Spyrise who are all either machines or cyborgs. It's not my place as a biologist to determine how realistic they are. I'm also including Starstrike here. You just can't see what's under the hood. Then we move on to the extremely unrealistic tier where we have characters that couldn't possibly exist in real life. We start off with Blastzone who is a fire furnace knight. I don't know what that is, but he looks like he's fire. Just fire. Fire is by definition not something that is alive. Fire is actually perfectly capable of destroying living material. Then we have Fire Kraken, who is a Kraken, which is also a mythological creature. But more importantly, he's constantly on fire. If you ever put wood in fire, you know that it eventually burns up. Fire needs some sort of fuel for combustion to happen, and in this case, that fuel would have to be produced by the creature itself, which is entirely impossible. Fire also generates immense heat that is very unsuitable for most life, at least on Earth. We can therefore rank Smolderash here for the very same reason. And we continue with Freezeblade, who is partially covered in ice. There are many warm-blooded animals that live in temperatures below freezing like polar bears or arctic foxes, but none of them has ice on themselves. The metabolism of cells slows down a lot by cold temperature and cells that are frozen can't function at all, so ice can never be a part of a creature. Rubble Rouser and Doomstone are, according to the lore, both made up of stone. Living organisms require some sort of liquid medium for chemical reactions to take place. For example, it's important for life to be self-replicating, which requires a reaction similar to DNA replication, which is entirely dependent on the liquid medium. So a living creature can never be alive if it's made up entirely of rock. Countdown is a bomb that is alive. I'll just leave it at that. Then we have the boxing spectre himself, Night Shift. He hovers off the ground riding on some sort of mist. This is unheard of on Earth and also very unlikely from an energy conservation perspective. Night Shift's upper body would have some weight to it and to have a gas of this volume, have low enough density to lift him off the ground is just not plausible. Moving on to the very unrealistic tier where we find creatures that well, they could also never exist in real life. They just don't have both feet in crazy town like the previous tier. Popthorn looks a lot like a sea urchin or something that is a real animal, but he also follows the classic Skylander trope where a head makes up the entire creature. A creature of this size would never have a mouth this huge, for example, and Popthorn also seems to have tiny bat wings on his back. Wings this small would never lift a creature of this size, and there are also more problems that we'll get to later. Frino is suffering from the same problem as Popthorn. He is like 45% head. Rattleshake is a snake, obviously. Snake's ancestors did actually have limbs, and having smaller limbs and eventually no limbs was actually beneficial for snakes. Rattleshake has a humanoid upper body and a snake lower body, which wouldn't be optimal for either lifestyle. Washbuckler has the same problematic design in that he's part humanoid, part something entirely different. Octopus limbs are great for swimming and clinging on to stuff, but not so much for walking on land. 
Underwater, they don't need to support all that much weight, since below the surface, the pressure is applied equally to something from all directions. Tentacle mustaches is not the thing either. Grim Creeper. This is a very unclear character. The proportions of his body is somewhat realistic, ignoring his humongous head and eyes, but he seems to be made up of some sort of weird blue mist. Things didn't get more clear after researching the lore, so I'm going to have to put him in the very unrealistic tier. Now we move on to the unrealistic tier. Not extremely, not very, just unrealistic. Riptide, Bumble Blast and also Dunebug are creatures that are starting to resemble something that could appear in real life. It's just that their bodies are unproportionately designed. This is very common when a franchise uses a cartoony art style in that everything is exaggerated. Some parts are much bigger than they should be and some much smaller. Riptide for example has huge forearms and a tiny waist. This will result in a very high center of gravity making it hard for him to keep his balance. Then we have Scorp, who according to the lore is a scorpion. He doesn't really look like one though from a biological perspective. Scorpions belong to the systematic class arachnids that also include spiders and they all have eight limbs, where Scorp has only four. Like insects, arachnids also have an exoskeleton, meaning that their skeletons is located at the outmost part of the body. This is not effective for a creature of this size, as the skeleton becomes very large thanks to the exponential increase in body volume, which is why animals with exoskeletons tend to be smaller than animals with internal bony skeletons. We now move on to the slightly unrealistic tier. We are still in the realm of fantasy, but we are starting to close in on what could actually be real living organisms. Zulu. His body is still disproportionate, like the figures in the previous tier, just not as much. For example, for a bipedal creature that walks around on two legs, it's not very likely that your arms would be four times the size of your legs. Roller Brawl is a human-like character, and we know that humans are real. She does, however, have a very large head, and the sheer weight of it looks like he would probably snap her neck if she sneezed violently or something. This is of course part of the art style of the games, but not very realistic. And with Scratch, we need to address the most unrealistic part about her, the wings. Designers of fantasy creatures usually tend to forget or ignore the fact that wings are limbs, analogous to arms or legs. Dragons, for example, commonly have bat arms attached to their backs, and in Scratch's case, bird wings. For wings to evolve to be able to provide flight, it needs to provide some sort of intermediary benefit to reach that point. For bats, it's still unclear, but bird wings were most likely thermoregulators for dinosaurs several million years ago. Having wings grow out in your back for thousands of generations without providing some benefit along the way is not very realistic. Slobbertooth is supposed to be some sort of dinosaur and he has many dinosaur-like features. He suffers from the usual problem in that part of his body is larger than it should be. His lower jaw, for example, would probably drop to the ground. He has what looks like armor plates, and we can see similar structures in creatures on Earth, like in turtles, rhinos, and extinct dinosaurs. These hard structures are all made up of keratin, which is actually the same protein that makes up hair. There you go, now we have a great conversation starter for the next party you go to. And finally, in this tier, we have Punk Shot. In comparison to other bipedal characters, she has a very slender design, which is actually more realistic proportions. She has a very streamlined body that looks like it would function well underwater, but Punkshock looks like she lives partly on land. The biggest problem I have with that is that these fins that looks like they would function well for stability underwater would probably dry up very quickly on land. Punkshock simply looks like she's not very suited for either life on land or in water. Now we finish up with the almost realistic tier, where there's just a few details stopping these skylancers from existing in real life. And yes, this is the final tier. This is simply as good as it gets. Hootloop and Free Ranger. It's worth mentioning that Free Ranger's feet looks much different in game. These characters are very avian-like, but they have bird feet where their wings are supposed to be. They don't seem to have the fantasy-style wings on their backs though, and it's unclear if they can fly at all. However, feathers have functions outside of flying, and so does claws and beaks, so having creatures like this evolve is at least almost possible. 
Glowing eyes is unrealistic though. Eyes function is to receive light and sometimes reflect it, not emit light. Weird eyes are actually much more realistic. And finally we have Stink Bomb, Trap Shadow and Grilla Drilla. Grilla Drilla's legs also look much different in game. These characters have much more proportionate bodies than some of the rest of the cast, but I will leave it to an engineer to decide how realistic Grilla Drilla's drilling contraptions are. Stink Bomb and Trap Shadow both have huge eyes, but this is actually not uncommon for nocturnal creatures who are awake at night since bigger eyes can absorb more light. It still doesn't make them glow though. That was my ranking of the characters from Skylanders Swap Force. If you like this video, you may also like my similar ranking videos about the characters from Spire's Adventure and Giants, which I'm linking to in the description. I've also gathered all my science videos about Skylanders in the playlist. Also, feel free to subscribe for weekly gaming content. That is however it for this video, thank you very much for watching. My name is Kevin Clean and I will see you next time. Take care!